following your career and the careers of these other highly successful investors, I've come to the conclusion that great investors are made, not born. Do you and Mr. Munger agree with this conclusion? Also, what mental attributes do you think a person should have if they want to try to become a great investor? Okay, so in this video, I wanted to talk about two things. First, what are the mental attributes of a great investor? Second, are these attributes developed over time or are they innate? Basically, are you born with these attributes or can you develop them with time and experience? The reason that I decided to make this video was because I stumbled upon this video of the Berkshire Hathaway shareholders meeting in 2002. Keep in mind, I'm gonna be showing you pieces of this video a little bit out of order just because I'm trying to improve the flow of ideas that Warren Buffett is trying to make. So one of the very first points that Warren Buffett makes is this, and it's a really important one. I, I would agree totally with you that a, a, great, a great IQ is not needed. I mean, you do not have to be terrifically smart to do well as an investor at all. I would say we've seen relatively little correlation between investment results and IQ. I mean, that, not, not that there are a whole bunch of people out there with 80 IQs that are knocking, you know, the cover off the ball, but, but there are all kinds of people with high IQs to get no place. So all he's saying is that you don't need to be a genius to be a great investor. And I would like and not like to believe that I'm living proof of this. The second mental attribute that he brings up, you have to figure out your investing philosophy, not someone else's. From 11 to 19, I was reading Garfield Drew and Edwards and McGee and all kinds of, I mean, I read every book, Gerald M. Loeb. I mean, I read every book there was on investments and I didn't do well at all. And I had no real investment philosophy. I had a lot of things I tried. I was having a lot of fun. I wasn't making any money. And I read Ben's book in 1949 or 50, 49 when I was at the University of Nebraska. And, and that actually just changed my whole view of investing. It, so basically all he's saying here is that he had to figure out what his investing philosophy was. And he really did this by reading the book, The Intelligent Investor written by Benjamin Graham. This book really shaped his entire view on value investing. So again, really, you need to just figure out what investing philosophy works best for you. And one of the many reasons that he says and I say that you need to figure out your investing philosophy is because if you're just copying other people's investing advice, most likely what's gonna happen is one day those investments will go south and you're not gonna have the knowledge about that investment to adjust it appropriately. So let's pretend that you bought a company just because you read online somewhere that it was going to double by next year. All of a sudden the stock prices starting to drop and you're feeling like you're losing money by the day. If you truly understand the investment that you made and it aligns with your investing philosophy, this won't freak you out. You won't sell or you might even buy a little bit more. But if you don't understand the investment, it'll scare you into selling even when you should. not Basically what I'm saying is if you don't understand the investment, don't buy in. The only time that I would say it's kind of acceptable to mimic somebody else's investment is if you truly understand their investing philosophy and that investing philosophy aligns with your investing philosophy. For example, I feel like my investing philosophy is pretty well aligned with Warren Buffett's investing philosophy. Keep in mind, it's not exactly the same. As far as similarities, I like to buy for the very long term in companies that I fully understand that have a very large moat, AKA a very strong competitive advantage. So whenever I read that Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway were buying heavily into Apple, it caused me to look deeper into the company. And as I looked deeper, I realized that Apple was a company that I was interested in owning and that it also aligned with my investing philosophy. And man, am I glad that I invested in Apple. So in my opinion, I think that you need to find your own investing philosophy. And in my opinion, that only happens slowly over time with experience. The third mental attribute that Warren Buffett mentions in this video is that you need to be thinking about buying a share of stock as buying the entirety of the business. And then also you need to be thinking about the traits that make up a good business. And really that basically told me to think about a stock as a part of a business. Now that seems so obvious. You can say, you know, that that, why should you regard that as a as, as as the Rosetta Stone? But it is a Rosetta Stone in a sense. It, it uh, once you crank into your mental apparatus that you're not looking at things that wiggle up and down on charts or that people send you little missives on, you know, saying buy this because it's going up next week or it's going to split or the dividend's going to get increased or whatever. But instead, you're buying a business. You've now set a foundation for going on and thinking rationally about investing. I, I, I glanced through most of the books anyway. I've, I've seen nothing to improve on Graham and Fisher in terms of the basic approach of, of going about investing, which is to, is to think about stocks as businesses and then think about what makes a good business. 
And this is because obviously buying a share of stock is literally just buying a share of the entire company itself. So basically that share of stock should perform similarly to the value or the performance of the entire company. By the way, the reason that I say similarly is because in the short term, the price of a stock doesn't always perfectly reflect the performance of a company. As Benjamin Graham once said, in the short run, the market is a voting machine, but in the long run, it is a weighing machine. That's the author of The Intelligent Investor, the same book that essentially shaped Warren Buffett's investing philosophy. On top of this, he talks about paying attention to the attributes that make a business a good long-term investment. Things such as competitive advantage over its competition. Basically, what is the company doing that's preventing other competitors from pushing it out of the market? Vigilant leadership. Do you trust people in charge to make the best decision. Long-term viability of the product that it's selling. For example, if the company sells water, most likely innovation is not gonna change our need for water anytime soon. But pretend that that company sells paper. Will we still be using paper 30 years from now? I'm not so sure. The fourth mental attribute that Warren brings up is that you need to be interested in money, but you can't be too greedy. You have to have an interest in money, I think, or you won't be good at investing. But I think if you're very greedy, it'll be a disaster because it, that will overcome rationality. Basically what Warren Buffett is saying here is that you need to have enough interest in money so that you're properly educating yourself on a particular investment, but at the same time, you can't be too greedy. This is because it'll lead you to make stupid investing decisions. Bitcoin. In other words, if you're too greedy, most likely it'll overshadow rational thinking and investing. In fact, Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon and also the richest man on earth, asked Warren Buffett why everyone didn't just copy his investing philosophy. And Warren's response was, because no one wants to get rich slowly. The fifth point, both Munger and Warren weighed in on. They said that you had to have a passion for finding out why things were happening and also you needed to have a passion for truly understanding a business. If you have a passionate interest in, in knowing why things are happening, you always are trying to figure out the world in terms of why is this happening or why is this not happening. That cast of mind kept over long periods gradually improves your ability to, to cope with reality. Read lots of annual reports, think about businesses, and try and think about which businesses you understand and which you don't understand. And you don't have to understand them all. Just forget about the ones that you don't understand. This may sound obvious, but you really need to use common sense when figuring out if a company is going to be successful. You really need to think logically and you also need to think as much as you can about the business conceptually as possible. By this I mean, do you truly understand how the business itself is making money? Do you understand the product it's selling? Do you understand why it's successful compared to its competitors? For example, I understand why Chipotle is successful. They sell very high quality food for decent prices and they serve their food very quickly. But if I bought into a company like Nvidia, I have no idea why they're better than their competition. I don't understand graphics processors and I probably never will. Basically, if I invested in Chipotle, that would be an investment. And if I invested in Nvidia, that would be a gamble. I think Warren Buffett puts it best right here. I mean, you have to be realistic. You have to just define your, your circle of competence accurately. You have to know what you don't know. Basically, you don't need to know everything. If the company's success doesn't make sense, don't invest in it. And the final and sixth mental attribute that Warren talks about is that you have to have very high temperament and you have to be able to do the opposite of the crowd. I would say that there, I don't know to what extent uh, an ability to detach yourself from the crowd, for example, I don't know to what extent that's innate or to what extent that's learned. I do think there's certain manners of temperament that may be innate and they may be learned, they may be intensified by experiences you go on, the partially innate, but then reinforced in various ways by your experience as you go through life. But that's enormously important. I think that he implies that he doesn't know if this is innate or if this can be learned over time. So what he's saying here is that you really need to be able to detach yourself from the decisions of the crowd. As Warren Buffett says, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. So basically to have the mentality of a great investor, you have to have very high temperament and make sure that you're not making decisions based on emotions. That means that you would have the ability to buy whenever everyone else is yelling sell. This relates to whenever he says that you need to be able to insulate yourself from popular opinion. It's not a complicated process, but it, it, it definitely requires uh, discipline. It, requ it requ requires insulating yourself from popular opinion. You just, you simply cannot, you can't pay any attention to it. It just doesn't mean anything. 
Typically, people are yelling sell the loudest whenever you need to be buying the market. If you understand that the overall market is going to go up in the long run, the daily highs and lows that we see absolutely every single day really don't matter. All it means is that we're going to have a chance to buy these assets at a cheaper price. This is what Warren Buffett was talking about whenever he said, opportunities come infrequently. When it rains gold, put out the bucket, not the thimble. So basically, you need to be investing as much as you possibly can whenever it looks like the sky is falling. So in conclusion, what I think he's implying here is that he does doesn't know if the ability to go against the grain or the opposite of the crowd is innate or it can be learned over time. If you interpreted something different from what he said, let me know down in the comments below. But now I really want to give my take on this. Yes, I believe that some people can be born wired to do the opposite of the crowd, but as somebody who's just very naturally risk averse, I truly believe that you can learn with time, especially if you're really highly educated on a topic, to go against the crowd, even if you aren't wired this way. This is because if you know enough about a topic, you'll be confident enough to do the opposite of what everyone else is doing. For example, according to the Boggleheads Guide to Investing, if you had bought a broad market portfolio of stocks, basically what they're talking about is a diversified index fund, the market has never dropped in any 15 year period. Meaning if you were educated on the topic and you knew this fact, you could mitigate your fear because you would know that statistically it is very unlikely that you'll lose money if you hold on for the long term. And because you were able to mitigate your fear, most likely you'll make more wise investing decisions. So I think if you're highly educated on a topic, most likely you'll be able to tell whenever the crowd is acting on emotion and you'll be able to develop this temperament that Warren Buffett was referring to. But I really think that this applies to almost everything in life. If you're really passionate about something and you really, really learn it and become an expert in a sense, most likely you're not going to act on fear whenever things go badly. And things are going to go badly at some point in whatever you're trying to do in life. Basically what I'm saying is you're more likely to be successful at something if you're really into it. Become an expert, make it your specialty. So in conclusion, in my opinion, everything that Warren Buffett mentioned can be learned. So my overall answer is that the mental attributes of a great investor are created, not born. So in review, the mental attributes of a great investor include, number one, you don't have to be a genius. Number two, you have to figure out your own investing philosophy. Number three, you have to think about buying a stock as buying the entirety of a business and the traits that make it a good business. Number four, you have to be interested in money, but you can't be too greedy. Number five, you have to have a passion for truly understanding the business. And number six, you have to have high temperament and you have to have the ability to do the opposite of the crowd. I hope you learned something from this video. And finally, I am not a financial advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. It really helps out. I'll see you next time.